Chapter Eight of Our Little Irish Cousin. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Our Little Irish Cousin by Mary Hazelton Blanchard Wade. Chapter Eight Blarney Castle. Nora's friend Molly had just got home from a long journey. At least it seemed a long one to Nora, who had never been farther away from home than the lakes of Killarney. Molly had been all the way to Cork and Queenstown with her father and mother. They went to see Molly's uncle start for America on a big steamer. Queenstown is at the mouth of the River Lee. It used to be called the Cove of Cork, but the name was changed to Queenstown in honour of Queen Victoria. It seemed a very big place to Molly, as she described the queer cars running through the city and the great steamers at the docks. It was a wonderful picture that little Nora saw in her mind. Molly had gone there in a railway train. When the guard shut her and her parents inside the car and locked the door, she was a little frightened at first. Then the engine gave a fearful shriek and the train moved. There were many other people in the car, or rather compartment of the railway carriage, as they call it in the British Isles. Their cars are divided into three or four parts, with doors opening on the sides. Each part is called a compartment. It was quite a jolly crowd. Everyone seemed in good humour, and strangers were soon talking together as if they had always known each other. They told funny stories. They joked and laughed, and Molly soon forgot her fear of the fast-moving train. "'It was just like a party,' she told Nora. At every station the guard unlocked the door and let out those who were going no farther. Others then got in, so the company was changing all the time. The compartment in which Molly rode was a third-class one, and the floor and seats were quite bare. But these things did not trouble the little girl. Her parents could not afford to buy tickets to go first or second class. They were glad enough to be able to go at all. Cork was reached at last, and Molly could hardly sleep nights after going about the city in the daytime and seeing the strange sights. When her uncle had gone away on the big steamer, she went with her father and mother into some of the mills and factories. She saw glass spun into beautiful shapes, woolen cloths woven by huge machines, and many other things made as if by magic. Sure, it seems as if these big wheels must be turned by the fairies, she said to Nora, as she told her little friend of what she had seen. It was all very interesting, but Nora liked best of all to hear of Molly's visit to Blarney Castle. She asked her to repeat it over and over again. Not far away from Cork is the busy little town of Blarney, and a little way out from Blarney is an old, old castle which is visited by people from all over the world. Did you ever hear of the Blarney Stone, or did you ever hear one person say to another, who has made a very polite or flattering speech. Well, well, I think you must have kissed the Blarney Stone. Perhaps you did not understand the reason for such a remark. Now you shall hear it. If you ever climb to the top of the walls of Blarney Castle and look down over the walls on the outside, you will see a certain stone. It is a magic stone, you may be told. It has a great charm, for if you kiss it, you will be blessed ever after with the power of eloquent speech. Your words to charm and wheedle will never fail you. You will always be able to say the right thing in the right place at the right time. You will say it so well, you will make yourself very pleasing to your listeners. But how is anybody able to kiss the Blarney Stone? It is too far down to be reached from the top. 
and too far up to be reached from the bottom. There is only one way. You must have a rope tied to your waist, and trust someone to let you down over the wall till you reach it. There are some people foolish enough to do this very thing. As Molly stood looking, and wishing she dared try it, she heard someone telling a story. It was about a young man who got his friends to lower him out over the wall. But just as his lips touched the stone, a shower of coins fell to the ground below. The young man had forgotten to take the money out of his pockets. Everyone laughed at the story, and Molly wished she could have been there to see the funny sight. "'I didn't kiss the real Blarney Stone,' she told Nora. "'But there was one inside the walls. "'It was a sort of make-believe Blarney Stone, "'and we all kissed that instead.' "'Daniel O'Connor must have been to Blarney Castle "'and kissed the stone,' said Nora, quite seriously. "'How else could he have had the power "'to move everyone by his words? "'He was a great man. "'When I grow up, I'll be after going to the great city of Dublin to see his monument. You see if I don't, Molly Darlant. Maybe we'll be going together, Nora, was the answer. And the two little girls skipped arm in arm across the fields of the beautiful Emerald Isle. End of chapter 8 And end of Our Little Irish Cousin by Mary Hazelton Blanchard Wade